Okay, today we're going to attempt to film the construction of a basic triode tube with the materials that I have available to myself. So the, the, the tube is made out of Pyrex glass and it uses tungsten wire for the seals. So the, the seal wire consists of copper for the lead wire, the, the wire you hook onto, and then a little piece of nickel right here for a weld and then a piece of tungsten for the seal, then another piece of nickel, and then a piece of steel for the lead wire, that for the, the wire that you connect to inside the tube. And it's going to be constructed in, in a circle, just to make it easier to handle. So we're going to have a piece of copper bent into a loop, welded to nickel, and then we're going to weld it to the, to the tungsten and then just have a piece of paper clip with nickel that we're going to weld on here. The construction of the envelope is pretty uh, primitive. It's just a section of tubing that the outer diameter has been blown up and then it has two seals, one going from either end. Uh, the reason for this is that I only have two sizes of glass tubing and the, the smaller one, it's only large enough to hold in two wires in a pinch. So I have to have to have two in order to do a triode. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare this right here. I'm going to make the, well first I'm going to prepare the copper right here because it's the easiest thing to do first. So here's some enameled copper wire. This is just some scrap copper wire. And I just just going to start out by bending it like that and I'm going to burn the insulation off. Just I don't have to deal with sandpaper and stuff like that. Okay, so now we have a section of oxidized wire right here. Very soft now. And I'm going to cut this, I'm going to clean off the ends, and I'm going to weld a piece of tungsten, of, sorry, nickel tubing that's recovered from the cathodes of old vacuum tubes. Okay, so here's a dead 6SN7. Uh, and you can see it has the type of cathodes we want. So I'm just going to take some pliers, cutters, and just. And then I can clean off that emissive material right there and then spot weld this to the wire. Okay, so here's the spot welder. It has a foot pedal. Also has an adjustment for the weld duration. Put that about. that about there. Yeah, that sounds good. And what I'm going to do is here's the nickel sleeving. And I'm just going to insert this over the end, maybe like a millimeter or two, and weld this on so it gives me a nice nickel surface to weld the tungsten on too. You can't weld tungsten directly to copper. Okay. OK, 
Okay, that was a little too long of a pulse, but it, I think it turned out okay. I'll just trim off this little excess right here and then we'll have a nice nice piece of nickel on there. Okay so I welded the other piece on there so now I'm gonna start to prepare the tungsten. The, the tungsten wire that I use it's recovered from an old halogen bulb and when I recover it, it's still a little curvy, so I have to flatten it out. Like from one of these. I got like, I think like five or six of these for like 50 cents each at a surplus store. So what I got to do is that I got to heat this tungsten up with the torch and then while it's still hot I got to flatten this out with some pliers. Okay, so there is an unfocused picture. Nice piece of straight tungsten wire. You can see how it was before. And I'm going to weld that on. Okay, so that, that, that stuck. And just going to see how generous I want to be with the tungsten. So the tungsten is very brittle. You can just break it off like that. You don't want to cut it because it will put a hole in your cutters. Okay, so I've got those pieces welded on there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a paper clip. And I'm after this part in the middle right here. You can, of course, just straighten this out and use the whole thing, but I'm being wasteful, so I'm just going to take the middle part that's already pre-bent. So we're going to do the same thing we did for the copper and put little pieces of nickel on here. I'm not sure it's really necessary for steel welding to tungsten, but I like to do it anyway.
Okay, so this weld uh, for the steel onto the nickel it has to be relatively short because it will burn through the paper clip. That's too long. Okay, I put a little too much nickel on there, so it's kind of long, but that's that doesn't matter. It's just wasteful. Okay, so you can see there. That's that's way too much nickel. Probably only need half of that, but that's that's okay. Okay, so that's done. So now we just have to spot weld that to the tungsten. Okay, so it didn't, didn't turn out great. But I think it should be okay. So I'm going to make another one of these off camera and then I'm going to start on the glass. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Okay, I think that turned out okay. Okay, so here are my two flares. Right here, and what I'm going to do I'm just going to pinch the ends just a tiny little bit so that the 
the wires can fit in there more easy or easier. So when we seal this in the glass, uh, we, we're going to put an oxide layer on here that makes it so it seals to the glass better. And before I do that, I'm just going to clean it off with some flux remover just to try to get any grease or stuff off there. It probably doesn't matter because we're going to be heating it up, you know, thousands of degrees, but I like to clean it off first. Okay, so now just let that dry off and don't touch it. So when we do the glass work, this is going to be very hot. So to hold it, I'm just going to wrap some copper wire down here so I can hold on to it with pliers. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like right here. Now before I seal it, I'm just going to extend the tungsten out and heat it with the torch a few times just to coat the outer layer with oxide so it will seal to the glass. I still really never know how long, how many times I should heat it with the torch. Okay, I think that's enough. So now I'm gonna try to seal it in the glass. So first what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna heat this up and clamp it so that glass is touching all of the wires. And then after that is done, I'm going to heat this up as high as I can with the torch and then pinch it down really hard.
So hopefully that'll be a good seal. I have to wait until it cools and then I can see what color the tungsten is. Okay, so there's no way in hell you're going to be able to see this, but the, the coating on the tungsten, it's slightly yellow, yellowish gold. That means it's a, it's a good seal. I know it looks black in the camera, but it's actually, it's actually a, a golden color. Okay, so I made three seals, and uh, I, I always make three seals and just choose the two best that I make. So um, these two, they have nice yellow tungsten, yellow golden tungsten all the way around. This one is more of a brownish black, so I'm, I'm going to use these two because they're more likely to have a, a good seal. Okay, so now we have to decide where exactly we want the everything to be. So I think I'm going to cut this piece off about right here. Now the thing that is critical in making this a clean cut is to pull while you're bending it. Okay, not great, but that's that's a whole lot better than I've done in the past. So now I gotta get uh, the blow hose hooked up to it and then seal off this end and blow this out. Okay, so I got this piece of tubing here. I'm just going to blow out the middle to make a make an envelope.
Okay, I think that's as far as I dare go. If you go go much further than that, the glass gets really thin. Okay, so now I gotta cut the excess off, you know, to place my seals here. And then we can see what it's gonna look like with the seals. Okay, so I trimmed the excess, excess glass off the envelope, so we have... So we have this so far. So now I'm going to get started on the electrodes. Uh, I'm going to make the plate in the, in the grid first, then we'll deal with the filament. It's very important when you're trimming this that you have something right here so you don't put any stress on the glass. I cannot emphasize that enough. So now I just got to get a grid and a plate. Okay, so this is going to be my grid right here. That's going to be my plate. I'm just going to weld this on. Okay, so this is the grid and the plate. The, the grid got a little bumped. I bumped into it when I was welding, so I had to straighten it out as best as I can, but it should be okay. Okay, so now I'm going to start to work on the filament. Okay, so for the filament, I'm going to use a bowl out for like a tail lamp or something like that. And I just smashed it open and we have the filament right there. I'm just going to clip it off right here. And then I'm going to stretch it out to make it a little bit longer. You want the filament to be just a bit shorter than the length of the, of the plate so that there's none, none, none of the filament that can see the plate like through line of sight. So you want all of the filament to be like covered by the grid because if like some of it is extended over here you'll have a parasitic diode that will make your tube not work very good.
Okay, I don't know if you saw that or not. Well, you definitely cannot see it right now. But I just stretched that out. Just a bit shorter than the length of the filament. So now I have to try to weld this on to this, this thing right here. Okay, so I have a piece of nickel sleeving here, and I just uh, undid this crimp right here so it was just the bare tungsten sticking out. I stuck it in here and I crimped it, and now I'm going to weld it. It's on there solid. Now I just have to make an extension right here to put this on. Okay, so up here I just welded on an extra piece of paper clip and I took another piece of nickel sleeving and placed it over and crimped it so it's holding that on until I weld it. Okay, it turned out messy, but I think it'll be okay. Okay, so that's how it's going to look. Come on. So now I just have to figure out where I want to mount the getter. I think I'm going to do it right under the filament right there. So I'm going to make a loop of titanium wire and weld it there. I don't think this is good for your cutters either. God, why won't you focus? So I'm just going to weld this on right here. Okay, so the getter's welded on. First I tried to do it over here, but I got a little overzealous and I burned through the paper clip. So I just had to re-weld this on with a piece of nickel, but it's all okay now. So I'm going to seal this in the glass first, 
and then I'm going to attach the evacuation stem and then we'll seal the other part on. Okay, now don't touch that. Okay, so now we need to do the evacuation stem. I'm just going to flare this piece of glass tubing. Okay, crappy little flare, but it should work.
Okay, that looks good. Okay, so we're ready to seal on this part right here now. I I accidentally blew a hole in the glass, so I just uh, put an extra evacuation stem on here, and then I pulled it off to seal it up. So this is the this is like one of the main make or break moments right here to see, seal this one on.
Okay, so I have the tube on the pump, and I have a high voltage power supply here, and I have one lead connected to the frame of the pump that's grounded, and I can use the other one to check for leaks. I don't know if you can see that at all. But I play it around the tube and there's not even blue glow. So that means that this, this tube is airtight, at least in the short term. I don't know about the seals, if they're any good or not. So, what I'm going to do for about the... I'm, I'm going to let it pump for about an hour, and like about every 15 minutes, I'm going to use the torch just to heat it up, to try to do a bake-out, because I don't really have a bake-out oven, so... I just have to do it manually. So I'll just show you what the first round of that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to give it another 15 minutes, uh, do that again, and just do that, do that three more times until I reach an hour, and then I'm going to use the induction heater to heat up the tube elements. Okay, so it's been pumping for about an hour now. I have my little checker hooked up. I'm going to see if it's working. So I'm going to vary the grid voltage. And it appears to be working. So I'm going to heat it up with the induction heater, test it again, and then seal it off.
Oh, wow. That was a bit more than I was expecting. Okay, so time to seal it off. Okay, I'm going to let it cool and then we can test it. Okay, so the same thing is happening right now that happened in the previous one I made. I sealed it off and it's acting like a Thyrotron right now. So if I decrease the grid voltage, it just ionizes. So I'm going to heat this with the induction heater again and hope that it recovers like the other one did. 
lo and behold, I think it worked. I reheated the getter. And now it's acting like a triode. So I wonder what what's causing it to have gas when I first seal it off. I wonder if maybe there's some oil vapor in the evacuation stem. And when I heat it up, it, it vaporizes and gets into the bulb or something. But that, I, I can't really explain it. Uh, it's really, I can't believe that this can work, you know. Because, like, I, I thought that you're supposed to have a diffusion pump or a turbo molecular, turbo molecular pump, and you're supposed to let it bake for hours and hours and hours under high vacuum. But for some reason, this stupid thing works. I think that's the end of this video. I'll keep you updated on whether this one survives as well as the other one. The, the other one is still working a few days on, so the only thing I'm questioning is if my seals are good, so. Thank you very much for watching.